Welcome back to the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Challenge presented by Rocky Boots. We're here in Nephi, Utah for day two of the fourth match of the National Rifle League season. On day one, competitors were faced with courses of fire that required movement, hunting skills, and the use of natural terrain, all in winds up to 20 miles per hour. Today on day two, match director Cole Kornberg has moved the competitors to a new location on the range, adding both new obstacles and targets. The winds this morning are light, but soon to pick up just like day one. Let's see how the competitors fare today and find out who will come out on top. You're watching day two of the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Challenge. Stage 15, the scrap pile. With a two minute time limit, shooter will engage the closer spinner first, then the farther one. Shots must alternate between each spinner until one is spun, then the remainder of the rounds are to be used on the remaining spinner. Half points for impacts and two points each for a complete spin. Hey guys, good morning. We are here at the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Rifle Challenge. I'm here with Alan. Alan, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm going great. Especially after that after round. After that one, yeah. After yesterday, oh gosh. This was, this was a great start for the day. So tell us, you're on stage 15, you have two spinners. Yep. What was the objective? Hit the first spinner, second one, back and forth until you get one of them to spin. Once you get one of them to spin, go to the other and keep the spin. Now, you got those to spin pretty damn quick. I had a good position. I felt good. I wasn't worried about the wind. The rain wasn't far enough. So I just kept hitting, and I picked a spot instead of actually aiming at the plate. I picked a spot on the ground, and then kept aiming at that spot. Awesome. So, okay. So a little bit different strategy. Well, Marcus Blanchard taught me that one. There you go. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> so you had what? Four rounds left over yeah. out of your ten? I had two. Two rounds. Okay. I Sorry, two rounds. I actually missed one. I, could, I was like, oh no, I'm screwed now that I missed one. But I was able to stay on target. Just, just keep, keep the focus going and keep going. Nice. Maximum points. Max points. Rounds and left and over. Yep. Can't beat it. No. Uh uh. Yeah. Wish you the best of luck, sir. Thanks for joining us. Such a great yes. match. And such a great program too. Oh, uh, it's our pleasure. Thank you for coming out. Okay, Always good. Hey guys, I'm here with JP at stage 15, the double spinners. JP, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? Very good. Thank you for the great day. Oh, it's our pleasure. Congratulations, man. You spun the ball. Yes. How was it? It was good. What happened was when I started shooting, I hit the first one. I realized, hey, start throwing the back ones, get the first one to spin, use the rest of your rounds to get the back one to spin. Right. So I just tried to hit the first one when it was spinning, went to the second one real fast, back to the first one, then second one went fast, and then spun it, and then had the rest of my rounds to spin the last one. So awesome. a little bit of quick on the shooting mental game, I guess. However you <laughs> well, say that. <laughs> you know what? You want to know what the strategy that worked for you it paid yep. off? Yep. It, if I'm not mistaken, you got that last, uh, the second spinner to spin on your last, last or round. Last round. Last round. Last round made it spin. Maximum points of 10, yes. so that's phenomenal. Yes. Now, you're also out here, and if you guys don't know and you haven't been paying attention, JP is the winner of our Get Out and Shoot Rifle package, and you're out here with that rifle. Yes. Actually, First, I'm out here running uh, all the gear, so the 200 rounds that Ammo Brother gave me, the Cowboy rifle, and the no-name tactical bags. So that's I'm actually, phenomenal. I'm actually using all of it this weekend. And how are you shooting this weekend? How's the match for you so far? Yesterday was tough. It's tough for everybody. The, the, the rifle's running great. Um, I'm not doing my part yet. Well, let's hope that stage starts. Well, this is your second stage of the day. Yes. So you're off to a good start, and we wish you the best of the rest of the day, and look forward to seeing Thank you, you. Uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Run and gun. With a round count of 10 and a 2 minute time limit, shooter must move to position 1 and engage target 1 with 2 shots. Then transition to position 2 and engage target 2 with 3 shots. 
Then position three to engage target three with two shots. Finally, position four to engage target two with two shots and target one with one shot. Hey guys, we are here at the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Rifle Challenge brought to you by Rocky Boots and Rocky Apparel. I'm here with Morgan Keaton. How are you, sir? Pretty good, how are you? Very good, thank you. So, you just completed stage 18. Yeah. Walk yep. us through it. Well, you just, uh, I don't know, everybody said not to run a tripod, so, so it kind of was like a challenge, so I ran it anyways. And you just, you have to shoot from four different positions at three different targets. You got to shoot from the first position, you gotta have, you have to shoot target number one twice, then transition to position two, shoot target two three times, and then run down the hill over here and shoot uh, from position three, target three twice, and then go to four, and then shoot target three, or start target two twice, and then target one once, and it's just a lot of moving and running and I a, a like lot of that. things to, to remember as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So in fact, I didn't dial on. On a couple of them, I just would. I was just gonna ask, hold. were you dialing, holding? What was your strategy? Well, I, I dialed on one and didn't hold, or and then I held on most of them. Awesome, but it seemed yeah. to work out for you. Yeah, High score on the stage, right. right? Yeah, that's what they said. I uh, total of eight points? I think, what, yeah, seven or eight, right? I, I think it was eight points, oh, if really? I'm not mistaken. Shoot, yeah. Seven or eight, either either way, it's phenomenal. You completed. The course of fire, most guys are yeah, timing out. Yeah, most guys are getting like, what, four shots off? Right. They told me that a tripod would take too long. I was like, well, shit, I'll just do it anyway. Do it anyways, prove them wrong. Yeah, why not? Show them you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure watching yeah. you shoot. We thanks. look forward to seeing you shoot some more, and uh, thanks for coming out. Yeah, appreciate it. Hey guys, we are here on stage 18 with Scott Gabio. Scott, how are you, sir? Doing well, good to see you. Very good, good to see you as well. So, walk us through the stage. All right, well, let's see. 600 yard targets, three of them out there, roughly 600 yards. Four different positions from trees. And I love my tripod. I was working the tripod like crazy. You gotta rest your, turn your rifle on a bag, and then I use a tripod leg to rest the work. And I practiced that a lot, and it worked out well for me right now. Definitely a new strategy. You went up there, you scored very well. Uh, 9 out of 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, happy about that. It's perfect. What gear are you using? Let's see. Oh, I got a Schmidt and Bender scope. But these guys are helping me out a bunch lately. I got a Bighorn TLG. I'm running Farline barrels. We got an AI chassis, Hubert triggers, and uh, Faisal tripods. Nice. And what caliber? Uh, 6 Dasher. 6 Dasher? Yeah. Oh, I'm shooting 115 D Tax, tub of bullets. Nice. Got a nice big VC for a 6 millimeter bullet. That's helping me a little bit. Terrific, terrific. So, for everybody who just watched you run that stage, not only are you, did you think outside of the box, you used a tripod, which I'm not a lot of guys are doing, but you're also a left-handed shooter. Yeah. Was this an advantage for you here? That second position is better for a lefty, which is pretty rare to come across that. There was a lot of righty friendly stages out here, and it's, it's so nice to see a, a stage that worked well for a lefty today, so I lucked out with this one. Nice. I'm trying to think of... Um, 
a big thing for me, I was worried I was going to have to go really fast. I was fumbling with the tripod a little bit. So learning where those targets are, learning landmarks. So as soon as you set the rest down, you can get on that next target just to save time, I think, was a huge Well, it's huge absolutely. Goal. Target acquisition is where most people lose time. Exactly. I know that's where I lose most of my time. Yeah. And then I feel once I get on it, I, I'm super rushed. You, you made that look easy. Oh, thanks, man. I was stressing and moving as fast as I could. So I feel like I'm happy I can do this. <laughs> Now, what would you say to anybody out there that's a left-handed shooter? I've seen a lot of left-handed shooters run right-handed holes really fast. That's not a particular disadvantage unless you're unsupported, like standing or kneeling, and it's hard to cycle a right-handed hole. But right. other than that, it's not a disadvantage. And I'd say if you're a lefty, be ready for right-handed friendly stages. Practice your support side and get ready to shoot right-handed when the time comes. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure. Look Thanks forward so to watching you shoot some more. And I'll let you get some rest. <laughs>
last couple of stages, I'm not planning on winning this, obviously, but I'm just having fun trying to learn whatever I can. That's yeah, the most important part. Exactly. Awesome. Hopefully I'll come back for the next match, do better, have some different gear. Awesome. Maybe a rifle that doesn't blow me off target every time I shoot. <laughs> that seven mag is, is, I mean, that's powerful, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, right, we're glad that you're out here. We wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Look Thank forward to uh, watching you finish out the match and hopefully we'll you said see you at future matches. Yep. Thank you. Oh, Thank I'll you. be back for more. Terrific. Yeah. Have a good one. You too. Travis, how are you, sir? Good, man. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for having you me. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. So, we know about your shooting career. You're always a phenomenal shooter. What we wanted to know is you've been a strong supporter for the National Rifle League. You've come out to, I think, just about every match so far and sponsored every match. Yep. What we get a lot of questions about is how do we practice this at our local range or at home, so on and so forth. What targets do we need? What sizes? So that's a great question, man, and I get this a lot. I get it on the three gun side of the house and then on the on the NRL side of the house as well. So the one of the challenges that I had when I was starting to shoot both of these um, disciplines is I don't have a buddy, right? Like right. I don't have somebody that's been doing it for a while. So I have to come out there and I kind of make stuff up as I go, right? right. So basically what I found is when I go out to shoot, um, I want to make sure that I roll out there, like everything is in a fairly tight little package in the back of my pickup, I can burn out there, throw the stuff out there, and I'm spending my time shooting, not setting up targets, right? Right. So um, the one that that I use a lot, um, and it works good if you've got a you know a partner that can spot with you, is our um, Sportsman Series Long Range Flash Target. I think the 10 inch rounds like 120 bucks or 90 bucks, something so, like that. Yeah, very affordable. Yeah, it breaks down and you can literally put it in the back of a, a two seat car, you know, in the, right. in the trunk of it. So that's really good. Um, I recommend doing 12 inch rounds. The way that I look at it is I want a great big plate, right? Because okay. if I miss off of a side by a little bit, I don't want it to hit the dirt and have to try and guess where it goes. I want to hit the plate, right? right. Because I know exactly where center is. So what I'm doing is I'm painting painting it all white and put it about a two inch orange dot right in the middle, right? So my so partner, that's exactly right. So you're aiming small and missing small, right? But if you miss that little tiny dot, you know exactly where it went because there's still an impact on the plate. That's what I'm saying, you know, go go with a bigger plate, you know? Um, so that's that's on the very, very affordable side of the house and it's, it's rock and roll. I mean, your setup time on that one is about two minutes. I mean, from like out of the back of the truck, sticking the rebar legs in there and setting the thing up ready to go. Uh, it's good. So, you know, two or three of those and, you know, and you put those at different yardages and you work different positional work. And, you know, from what I found, and again, I'm, I still consider myself fairly new to the long range side of the house. I mean, I've, I've shot it a bunch, but it's been like two matches a year, you know, so I'm not, I'm not really in it, but, um, you know, what I found is when I go practice, I use a 223 trainer and a 10 inch plate at 300 yards and everything I do is positional work. You know I mean? Once you got the dope, you know I mean? And that's, that's another problem that a lot of people have is they don't have the distance. Right. Right. So when I mean, you think about all these stages, like that's positional, that was positional. The first one was positional. I mean, it's all positional, all positional. and everything's been like a 0.6 target or point bigger, right? Right. So a 10 inch round at 300 yards and all this positional work. If you know what your date is on your on your big gun, right? On the normal gun that you shoot with this, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. And you gotta figure out the win. But if you don't have the distance to do that, wear that positional stuff out three, 400, 500 yards, you know, and that's gonna be probably 70% of your match. Absolutely. You know? so. Bring out a great point. 
Yeah. We had a great fleet. So to find out more about MGM Targets, go to your website. Yep. Yeah. MGMTargets.com. Travis G. MGMTargets.com. If you got any questions, hit me up direct. I'm happy to help out however I can. Perfect. So truly appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, brother. All appreciate the support. Appreciate all the hard work you guys do. Oh, likewise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sir, how are, you, how are you feeling right now? Awesome, man. Uh, first top three, really top five of the national match. So really happy, really stoked. It feels good. It's fun. You and Gustavo kind of came out, dug yourselves out of uh, out of a little bit further down to take second and third. Yeah. Amazing. What was going through your mind? I was in Jake's squad day one and watching him shoot. It was it was impressive. It was a good learning uh, for me to come into day two and. You know, just try to have a good day. So I think I was in eighth after day one. Right. I tied with probably five, six, seven guys. Uh, came out today and just tried to have fun. Uh, just relaxed and uh, shot, shot pretty well today. I was pretty happy with it. Like you said, first top three finish in a national level match. So we have to ask, what gear are you using? What can you not live without? <laughs> um, honestly, I just started shooting the 115 DTAC bullet All in right. the tub. And uh, gotta admit, I, I love that bullet. Uh, the BC on it, the wind on a super windy match like this, 15 to 30 mile an hour winds. I think that was uh, an advantage. Gotta give a shout out to Lisa Jones at Jay Allen. Got that chassis, been shooting that this year. Uh, and then Gun Vault and the ES Tactical here in Utah, they've really uh, helped me this year. I've been shooting about a year and a half now, and so they've really helped me uh, with, uh, with, with my foot and my barrels and the chamberings. Good showing for the match in Utah for the Utah boys. Absolutely. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Okay. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate we look forward to seeing you some more matches, brother. Okay. Oh, que pasó, amigo? Bien, bien. Congratulations. Thank That's you. all the Spanish I know. So yeah, I know. we're going to have to go into English. <laughs> okay, we're going to English. Yeah. Second place in a very tough match. I know. Uh, yesterday I shot okay, and today I shot real good. You, you keep surprising us all the time. You, you're just getting constantly better and better. You're having a great time. You're a great ambassador for for the sport, yeah. and you're representing California. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. It's it, for the new shooters. They want to come and shoot. This it's a great community, and and the long range, like a uh, if you want to start shooting, you just just come over. Very, very good job. Congratulations. We're very happy to see that. Yeah, the trophy is nice. going back to yeah. California. Thank you. It's going to be in NorCal. Not SoCal, but NorCal. Yeah. We still love you guys. <laughs> Congratulations, you. my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys. We are here at the awards ceremony for the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Rifle Challenge, and we are here with the champion, Mr. Jake Weaver. Hey. Jake, how are you, sir? Oh, doing great. Doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing phenomenal. Thank you very much. So, number one. Yep. How's it feel? Uh, it feels good. It was a, uh, a great match. Um, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, the course of fire. It seemed like everything was different, and it seemed like it was all a challenge. Day one, you had, closing out the day, you had, I think it was like an 18 point lead, mm -hmm. almost two stages above everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So on day two, do you go into this still super anxious and, and ready to, to kick ass, or are you a little mm -hmm. bit more relaxed? I mean, what's going what's going through your mind? I've you never know, had, I had that a, uh, You know, I had a, uh, a good day on day one. Um, the course of fire was much tougher on day one, and so, um, you know, I, I had some good stages. I racked up some good points. Um, day two, I came in uh, probably a lot more relaxed and just had some fun. Um, shot some stages as some practice, the KYL racks and some of the hay bale stuff, and you know, the whole squad that we shot on was just really, really good. And uh, we actually had uh, third place and fifth place in this squad as well, Clint Adams and Nate Bell, and they shot excellent as well. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Well, anything that you'd like to say to anybody out there who's thinking about getting into long-range precision, NRL, uh, any of those type of sports? 
You know, the Long Range Precision game is uh, just an awesome community of shooters, um, awesome community of people. Um, just come out, try it, have a good time, um, and you know, most every shooter that, you, that you'll come across um, is always open for questions. Um, ask them and you know, you'll probably get some really good answers. There you go, guys. Again, congratulations, Jake. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. This concludes the 2017 Dog Valley Precision Challenge. Match director Cole Kornberg put together an excellent match, designing courses of fire that blended both hunting and the use of natural terrain. Competitors this weekend got to experience a match that was challenging, fun, and rewarding. The National Rifle League would like to congratulate Jake Vibbert, Gustavo Carcaccia, and Clint Adams for finishing top three in the match. The National Rifle League would also like to thank the match directors, all the ROs, sponsors, competitors, and everyone else that helped make this match possible.